Hey there class, if you're watching this video right now, I want you to go ahead and give yourself a big pat on the back for once again figuring out how to attend a lecture online. This is the second day of English 105 that we are meeting on YouTube and BB Learn, and according to last Monday's attendance question, we're meeting from all over the country right now. That's Tucson, Sierra Vista, Santan Valley, Queen Creek, Anthem, Goodyear, Gilbert, Phoenix, Peoria, Scottsdale, Palm Springs, LA, San Diego, Oakland, Seattle, Missoula, or at least on the drive back to Montana. Maybe just coming back from snow machining through northern Alaska. Hold up in our dorm rooms with canned food and toilet paper. Sitting at a desk, sitting in bed, we're sitting on a couch with a dog while our boyfriend makes us a sandwich. We're on an inflatable mattress in our old bedrooms. Personally, I've been filming these cats. You've already met Bartleby, and this is Pia. Neither Bartleby or Pia are actually my cats, but I thought you might want to see them anyway. After all, this is the internet, and I hear it's the place for cat pictures. In some ways, I think it's really interesting that we're in the middle of a group project right now. On one hand, regular face-to-face -face communication is obviously the best way to get to know somebody. But then again, there are real advantages to meeting and working online. You can watch this video anytime you want. You can work on this essay as an entire group at once using technology like Google Docs. I can splice in cats and sound effects and pop culture references, so on and so forth. We were already planning on working online for part of this project because it's really the best way to contact each other a lot of the time. There are some things we're better at online. In fact, there are some things I'm better at doing by myself, and then there are some things I'm better at doing with other people. That's my attendance question for you today. What's something you do better with other people? And what's something you do better alone? Take a moment to answer, then we'll consider how well the sources in your literature review are working together. And remember, even if you're stuck alone in your dorm room rationing toilet paper, we're still together as a class. Today I'd like to talk a little bit more about what it means to synthesize our sources for the literature review. Now, Merriam-Webster defines synthesis as the combination of parts or elements to form a whole. Likewise, synthesis is something that happens in many different fields, not just rhetoric. Maybe most notably, chemistry. Just like a plant uses water, carbon dioxide, and sunlight to produce energy and oxygen, you too must look, like, look at a wide variety of elements and recombine them into one new source. For class today, I've put together an outline for you to fill in that gives you space to put all the different sources you've found so far into either your introduction, literature review, or even future sources of this essay as you move on toward a conclusion. Now, I'm not expecting you to necessarily have an answer for your question right now, but you should have some kind of working draft of the solution to your question by the time we meet for small group conferences starting next Wednesday. Once you've finished up the synthesis worksheet, I'd like you to move on to the reflection section for today. I have three questions for you, starting with, is there a most popular source that you're using? A lot of the times when I'm writing an essay, I find myself using one or two core sources to structure my ideas around. Do you see a few sources that are going to be most useful for you as you continue developing your essay? This is a great thing to take note of between you and your team. Second of all, do you have a least popular source in your essay? Likewise, sometimes sources don't really fit with each other. 
This doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad sign though. You might have a source you really do want to use as a distinct and different uh, section of its own. If that's the case, that's all right. Just make sure to discuss this with your group ahead of time. On the flip side, you might see that this source really doesn't go along with most of what you're saying in the rest of the essay, in which case you probably should take it out in order to narrow your focus down to one particular thing as we're trying to answer just one question with this research essay. Finally, is there a section of your paper that's lacking sources? If there's a section of your group's essay that doesn't seem to have as many sources as others, that might be a good place to put your personal interview or survey in case you haven't completed that yet. If you haven't, maybe you want to take another look at the sections of your paper that don't have as much outside research and consider how you might conduct research of your own to fill in the gaps that haven't yet been connected to what you've put together so far. Anyway, thanks for listening. We will be right back here tomorrow to continue our discussion of how to combine many voices into one as we look at the next stages of our literature review. If you have any questions, keep in mind you can call, text, or email me anytime today. Otherwise, I'm really looking forward to seeing how all of you independently come together as a group online.